Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be cheap famous? I don't know, probably never. However, hopefully you're watching me in black and white because although you got a bit of a hint from the title of this film I don't want you to see the finished result until further on in the film so as the title the thumbnail and if you've read it the description will have already told you this is the third installment with the AAK girls who are of course Anne Angie and Kaylee. So, if you want to find out exactly what our looks are for this month, which palettes we've chosen, and whether you'd like to uh, see this in glorious Technicolor then my friends you are in precisely the right place so grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy This is my part of this instalment. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I'm aware my face may look a tad odd. It's because it's blisteringly hot in my house, even with the heating off. I have no idea what's happening. Um, and I used my Rosy Tone Age Perfect Cell Renewal L'Oreal moisturiser today which I forgot leaves me looking a little bit pink <laughs> not good when it's a hot day in your house um, and then obviously my usual uh, anti-perspirant uh, anti primer this one on top but it's gonna have to work some today to keep my foundation on I apologise, I have no idea what that accent was. Clearly the heat is getting to me. Hmm. <clears throat> right. This is the third instalment with the AAK girls. And it's the Green Goddess instalment. Which is awesome because I haven't used this palette yet and I've been looking for a reason to use it. And uh, here it is. This is the Kaleidos Futurism one. This is actually the first... Um, of the Kaleidos, actually it's the first of the Kaleidos palettes, but it's the first of the Kaleidos palettes that really called to me with the colour scheme. Um, if you don't know what they look like, there we go. I've stuck my names to the mirror down here so that I know what they're all called. <clears throat> so this was the first one that called to me, and the first three were this one. Astro Pink and Cyber Bronze and on Depop which I trawl at stupid o'clock in the morning when I really shouldn't um, someone had got the Astro Pink so I thought do you know what I've got a lot of green palettes anyway there's been a lot released this year I'd recently bought the Smoke Sessions palette which is quite similar to this by Melt so I thought right I'll get the Astro Pink just to see what the formula's like because I liked that colour scheme anyway absolutely fell in love with the, with the colour theme so treated myself to this when I got uh, where I'm disabled part of my benefit gets taken and I get a car <clears throat> my choice um, but seeing as how I can't get anywhere without one and hubby doesn't drive um, and public transport in my area is crapola and if we go up to visit his mum, <clears throat> there is no public transport on her road. So, yeah. 
So, um, well, if, if you give the car back in a decent condition after three years, you get a bonus for looking after it. And I always look after my cars. <clears throat> so, I got a bonus, thought, right, oh, I'll treat myself to this. Um, so I bought this full price. Literally two days later, somebody was selling it on Depop. And I'm like, mm. But it I think that's why I haven't used it yet, because part of me is like, if I'd waited two more days, two more days. And then I bought Cyber Bronze. <clears throat> and then someone was selling the Neon one, so I bought that one. And then my lovely friend Kay, I don't know if you can see back there, was a bright coloured box. My lovely friend Kay, who has gifted me with much makeup over the years, uh, including the full set of the certified glitters that match the Hesina 2 palette. Um, bless her heart, she, she actually messaged me and said, so what have you got? Because we were chatting about the fact that I'd missed out on the Jeffrey one before Beauty Bay got a cheeky little restock and didn't tell anybody and I picked him up from that. Um, and she was saying, so what is on your Christmas list? And I said, well to be honest, probably the only thing at the moment is the turquoise one to get my matching set. Next thing I know, in the post, she bought me the turquoise one. So okay, love you lots, thank you so much. But this is the AAK Girls, it's the Green Goddess, and I've done quite enough wittering, so I'm going to... Uh, let me talk you through the eye shapes, because I didn't do that on my last film. So let's get you zoomed in. Um, I do have my usual eye primer on, my Crow and Pebble eye primer, which you all know is my absolute go-to. I do have a discount code with them. They have never sent me PR. I have always bought everything that I have from them, but this is by far the best eye primer I've ever, ever used. All details of my discounts are in my description box and they will clearly state whether I earn from them or not. Right. Now, oh, I apologise for my throat growling at you. I've actually got deep set eyes, which a lot of people confuse with or are told that they have. Hooded eyes, because we get the same issues. We get transference of colour onto the upper lid. Um, if we're cutting our crows, we have to cut onto the upper lid. Yes, I've got a little visitor here who is not paying rent, but if he stays much longer, he will be. Um, and also, if we're using glitters, even with glitter glue, we get a bare patch through the middle there. That shows you how hot it is. This eye primer does not usually crease on me at all. And for those of you who asked, yes, that's how I apply my eye primer. With a little brush. It could be actually that I applied it a little bit too soon after putting my <coughs> moisturiser on. Right. <coughs> I'm going to talk you through the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes and I'm going to give you a workaround for each style. If you've already seen me do this God knows how many times, feel free to fast forward until you see me wave a brush at you that has pigment on it. Right. When I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid, inner to outer corner. You can't see much, but you can see it. So I've not got hooded lids. It's only if this static upper lid completely covers right down to your lash line, part or all of your mobile lid, that you have a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Let me show you deep set eyes. If I, this is the eye that I'm blind in, so I can be sure. God, I don't know what is wrong with my throat today, folks. I'm so sorry. ASMR channel with a sore throat. Great, great choice. <coughs> If I cover my visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away. And then if I cover the static lid and do the same thing, you can see I've got lid there that tucks away. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that gives me the same issues that hooded lid did people have. Right. If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. 
and on your static lid sketch out where you need your new crease to fall. Obviously that's going to reduce the real estate between the crease and the brow so use slightly smaller blending brushes and if necessary go right up to the brow with the colour. If however you have deep set eyes like myself where you can see the mobile lid what we have to do when we're putting colours through our crease is just stop, <clears throat> relax our brows and make sure we've come up high enough that you can see it when our eyes are open. So, as you can tell, two very, very different ways of dealing with two very different eye shapes. Now, I'm actually going to be using one of the <coughs> brush sets that I have uh, recommended, listed in my description box below, uh, from AliExpress. And I am going to go in initially with, these are all clean, they are just stained. So I've got a loose, round, fluffy brush slightly smaller, less loose or more dense brush and a flat packer or concealer brush. These are <coughs> in the set they call them tapered blending brush 6 eye crease brush 8 and medium shader brush 2 and I am now going to start putting some colour on my eyes. Uh, I think I'm going to start off with this gorgeous mustardy yellow called Radioactive. Okay. So if you're fast forwarding, now's the time to slow down again. <clears throat> so, the AAK girls, they consist of of a lovely Anne, who I still refuse to believe is in her 60s, absolutely refuse to believe it, uh, myself, Angie, and Kaylee Wesley. So, let's start with Kaylee for a change, because I normally start with Anne and do it alphabetical. Let's start with Kaylee. Kaylee is um, an ex-service woman. She had to leave the forces because of a back injury. So she has done her time for her country. And she is such a lovely woman. She and I joke that because I worked for the Royal British Legion, uh, organising travel tours, etc., to battlefields and cemeteries and stuff for the veterans. Right, where I've got that little visitor there, the um, pigment is actually clinging to that bit which is really annoying, but I will just keep blending, like Dory, keep swimming, just keep blending. It's actually quite sore, it's one of those annoying <clears throat> under the skin bumpy ones that just hurt. Right, do the same this side. Um, yeah, she and I joke that we're about the only people that use the 24-hour clock. So we're 24-hour clock buddies. Um, because, you know, years of doing itineraries and dealing with military individuals in the Legion, you automatically use 24-hour clock anyway. Um, and obviously she being ex-military, she uses 24-hour clock. So um, I think more if people say to me six o'clock in the evening I instantly think 1800 I don't think 6 p.m. I actually think in terms of the 24 hour clock now so yeah <laughs> just a little something she and I have in similar and she has got some amazing dogs and every so <laughs> every so often she has to stop filming because they're either playing or they they lap water so noisily it's awesome I believe she's got Great Danes um, you know, like Scooby-Doo's, and they just, oh, they, they frequently interrupt her filming, bless her. Um, but they're her babies, and she just grins, and she's like, yep, yeah, that's whichever dog it is. 
but I'm just cleaning this brush off on a clean washcloth. Um, I don't like using colour switches, I used to, um, but I find they're far too harsh on your bristles, especially if you've got natural bristles. I mean, these are synthetic, <clears throat> but for God's sake, don't use natural hair bristles in a colour switch. Um, it's always a good idea just to relax your brows and just check the shapes are the same because unlike a certain Jimmy Chuck, I don't Photoshop my results. Right, I'm going to go into Smog, which is the lighter of the two greens. These two greens look very, very similar in terms of colour in the pan. Um, on camera you can see this has got a lot more yellow to it and this is a lot more blue based green. Uh, but to the naked eye, they're looking very similar, so I'm hoping when they actually go on your eye, they do look different. So now normally this is my good eye, and the other eye is my bad eye, but it seems like this one, because of that bloody spot. Out damn spot! Um, it's going to give me problems today with blending. So you might have to just ignore how badly this eye looks and just concentrate on the other one for a change. Yes, so that's Kaylee. She's an absolute nutcase and I love her to bits. Um, I often said if I, if I won enough money on the lottery, which is going to be very difficult because I don't actually play the lottery, uh, but if I, if I won enough money, um, I would absolutely get a cruise across to America because I don't like flying. God gave me inbuilt ballast so I can float. He did not give me wings so that I can fly. So. Plus I get really, really bad chronic inner ear pain if I fly. <clears throat> which has only got worse as I've got older. So I would take a slow sort of two week cruise across to America. And then I would hire a huge like 19. Is it the 54 caddies that had like the the space age type rocket fin tail lights. I think it was, was it 54 caddy or was it 53? Either way, that's the kind of caddy that I want, either in powder blue or in um, black and cream, where it's black at the bottom and cream at the top, but preferably powder blue. Possibly because of the 54 convertible to light blue as we're coming into the season. Um, but I just, I'd love to do that and just ride around in America in it and just visit loads of places and, you know, do Route 66 and stay in motels and just get to see America, you know, not, not all the touristy places, but get to see America. I'd love to do Nashville, I'd love to go to the Bluebell Cafe in Nashville. Um, and obviously the old Opry I'd have to do if I was in Nashville. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a list of people whom I would absolutely have to visit, and Kaylee would most definitely be on that list. <clears throat> And so would the lovely Anne, who is, I mean, she's just, she's what I want to be when I grow up. She's just, you know, she, she has the most wicked hair colours, she shaves the side of her head, and she does all the kind of wacky, crazy things that you would absolutely want. She's kind of like... I guess she's the sort of aunt that would come to Christmas and say all the wicked, naughty things that um, you really wouldn't want your kids to hear, you know? Right, I'm just cleaning the brush off again and I'm going to go back in with the other green, which is E.T. I know what you're doing. Why did you put that mustardy colour on if you're just going to cover it up? Because it's like an onion. It's got layers. One thing I do notice with this Kaleidos formula, it is very, very kick-uppy in pan. <clears throat> That's fine though, because I just, um, I just leave it laying on the top there, and then pick it up 
next time I dip in to get some pigment on my brush. Yeah, this one is really annoying me where it's not blending properly there. It's really frustrating me. But the spot appeared this morning and not a lot I can do about it, unfortunately. I do struggle here and here each side with dry patches anyway. But for once it looks like this side is going to be the better of the two eyes. And the reason I say it's normally the worst is because this one got pulled around a lot when I was like four or five years old, trying to work out why I wasn't seeing properly in it before I went totally blind in this eye. So I've got the super super deep creasing just here, um, which is frustrating to say the least. And this eye does tend to give me more fallout than the other eye simply because it moves more. I do like this palette. I'm so frustrated that it's not blending properly over that bloody spot. So, and I absolutely adore the woman. She is nutty as a box of frogs and I absolutely adore her. I really, really do. Um, I might actually grab a pencil brush to put some black on and then blend it out with the eye crease brush because I want to control exactly how much of it I put on. So I'm going to grab this Morphe MB27 and I'm going to dip into dark side and I'm going to pop a bit of that on the outside edge here and then run some of it through the crease like so you know what, I haven't done Halo Eye for a while. Let's try doing a little bit of pipe this open the eye, a little bit of black on the inner corner as well. And I should do the same this side, hopefully, not poking myself in the eye though. This is a really nice black. Mind you, I'm saying that now. I haven't blended it yet, have I? Wait until you've blended it, and and then decide whether you like it. But this looks like a proper, proper black. Now, I do have to stretch my lid here, because otherwise what happens is the pigment just sits really loosely in the deep creasing. And then I end up with it all cascading down my face throughout the day, which is horrible. Just tidy up that little bit there. And that little bit there. I'll do the edges in a little bit. It does look weird when you're starting a halo eye. Yeah, look at how that black, just amazing. Really, really, really pigmented black. Right, and now I'm not going to put any pigment on the brush at all. Just going to blend out what I've already laid down. Cannot see a damn thing. I hope I'm still on screen. Yay! I like this. 
this. Oh, a little bit, a little bit low down there. Never mind. I can deal with that. Rude. Yes, so Anne would absolutely be. Anne and Coley would definitely. We'd be the sort that would probably get kicked out from quite a few bars actually before we'd uh, finish the night. I get the feeling we'd end up a little bit raucous. But then. There's nothing wrong with being a little bit raucous. Nothing wrong at all. Um, now normally when I'm doing... Wow, that looks so messy. Normally when I'm doing a halo eye, I'll do a cut crease. But, I really want to see how good the shimmers are and the best way to test that is to see how they fare over a dark matte so that's what I'm gonna do I'm going to grab this brush which is the medium shader brush um, basically a concealer brush to me. Um, once I've popped the pigment on here I'll be wetting it with this primer spray from Wet n Wild. You can use any spray. You can use a primer spray, you can use a moisturising spray like MAC Fix Plus or Marie Badescu. You can use a setting spray, finishing spray, you can just use water out of a tap but don't ever put a dry brush, a wet brush into a dry pressed pigment. Right, I'm going to go into a Glamora. Okay, this is quite firmly pressed and it is looking like it's going to hard pan straight away. But, even though it's going to hard pan, it is letting me pick up pigment <clears throat> so it's obviously got high oil content. Now, I always dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is put it in the crook of your fingers and just twist it round because you don't want moisture getting down there and loosening the bristles on your brush. Right, tiny mirror here so I can see what I'm doing. And yes, that absolutely was able to cover the black without any problem at all and that is really quite impressive I really like that I'm just going to grab a little titch of black Just to buff over that outer corner. Oh, I like. So I'm going to dry the brush off. <clears throat> and if I show you, I don't know if you can see. Can you see it's got like hard pan there? I'm actually going to put the brush directly onto the area that's gone hard pan. You can see you can still pick pigment up. So. That's good. It's obviously got a lot of oils in there, shimmer pigment. But you can see I only went over the bit, see the bottom bit there? Still haven't touched that bit. Just been going over the bit that's got the hard pan. Just to prove a point, because I don't lie to my 4F family, it's not what we do in this place. Not what we do at all. Now hopefully because the black is 
in the inner corner. I shouldn't have to stretch the lid out to do this bit. Yay! Tad a little bit further in maybe. liking this look. Right, <clears throat> I am going to pause you while I uh, pop some foundation on etc. And I will be back to finish off this eye look with you. Now my darlings, I am going to have to wait until the next time I press record to chat to you again. You, however, will see me instantly. Pierre I am back. Right. Trying out a different foundation and uh, it's a little pale, even for me. <clears throat> Perils of buying foundation online. Right, I'm going in with this flat top brush and I'm going to dip into the dark side. And I'm just going to run that about halfway along my lower lash line, I think. Because it is a very, very good black. Hmm. And then... Right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette and I love it because it's flat topped, but it's chunky, so it's great for getting under your bottom lashes. And I'm going to dip into Smog, which is the lighter of the two greens. I'm going to start at this end and then buff along into the black. Just to soften it a tad. Lush. Right, this is a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably a decade ago and I'm going to dip into Nuclear which is the only shadow I've not used in this palette yet. I'm going to use that on the inner corner there and just bring it down and blend it into a bit of the smog. This is a pure true yellow gold. Reminds me of the Jeffrey um, Liberace highlight that he's got in his 24 karat palette of highlighters or Fenty's um, Trophy wife. So, I'm going to pause you for one last time while I decide which highlight I'm going to pop on. Choose mascara and lippy, and I'll be back with my final look. I am back. Okay, the highlight that I used, yes, it's green, it's one of the ColourPop. Super Shock Cheek in Perilune. What I like about these is even though I had powdered my face, i.e. I'd set it with my Jeffree Star powder, I'd put my bronzer and my blush on, which were both powders. This, when applied with a brush, goes on without dislodging your foundation underneath it. Love that about these. Absolutely love that. The mascara I went for today is my Maybelline Lash Sensational 
Lash Multiplying, Multiplying Mascara in Intense Black. That's a lot of words. And the lippy. I picked up Jeffrey's five year anniversary set with the white caps. So now all of you people out there who've been holding on to these from five years ago and selling them for stupid prices. Ha ha. Um, I will admit I have got mistletoe because I bought that off of a friend for about 15, 20 quid. So she wasn't charging silly prices. What I did notice about this one, I don't know whether it's because obviously the mistletoe that I had was about three years old when I first got it off of her. So I don't know whether it's because it had thickened up over time or whether this is a new formula. But this is a lot, lot thinner than the original mistletoe. And even though I said in the past, I apply the bottom lip, then I apply the top lip, I don't press them together and then decide whether it needs another coat or not. This actually did need a second coat. This was less opaque. However... I have got two coats on my lips and it still feels um, as light um, and unobtrusive as Jeffrey's lipsticks always do. It's not quite set yet, but it's still kiss proof. And if you're doing a green look, well, you know me, if I'm going to do green, I'm going to do green everywhere. I must admit I was tempted to use some of that as uh, a green mascara but I thought as that black was so lovely I've done a halo eye today I thought I would just do the black mascara. So this is my green goddess look but if this is the first one that you have watched then my darlings you have the pleasure of two more films. You have Anne. You have Kaylee. Together we are goddesses. So much so I think I'm going to grab my little crown that I used when I was being Disney villains as a princess because it's got a bit of green on it. And this, my darlings, is the Green Goddess look. So, let's take that back off again. So I do feel a bit of a tit wearing it, I have to say. So, please make sure you go and watch both ladies' films because you're going to be missing out if you don't. If you've come here from either of their channels, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope this, this mad, wittering, half Welsh, half Yorkshire bird hasn't totally put you off watching more of my films. Uh, I do have an awful lot you can choose from. Uh, and would be absolutely delighted if you two would like to join the 4F family. We are uh, by far uh, the nicest family on YouTube. Okay, I'm biased, but I still think we're the nicest family on YouTube. So my darlings, all that remains are for me to say as ever is you'll stay fabulous and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.